What is going on everybody? It's Sean O'Connell, the Managing Director here at Cinema Blend, and I am continuing my run through every single episode of Game of Thrones. And as everyone knows, we are running out of time. Season 8 is going to begin very, very soon, and so even though I am traveling for work and I'm going to be at a new location uh, for this entire week, the Game of Thrones binge cannot stop. Thrones waits for no man, and that includes me also. So I will continue to record these from my hotel room with a brand new backdrop, and we are up to... Season 5, Episode 3, which I'm told is called High Sparrow. So far, I'm really liking everything that's happening uh, in Season 5. Uh, I love the Arya scenes that are taking place in Bravos. I think Danny's story is starting to take some interesting turns. Jon Snow becoming the Master Commander, mm -hmm. the High Commander, mm -hmm. Commander. He, he's in charge of the role. Um, and there's some really interesting things that I think are happening in King's Landing with the Lannisters, with the departure of Tywin Lannister. And of course, Tyrion and Varys being on the road is always great. Oh, also Jamie and Bronn. So there's a lot of people I want to catch up with as this season rolls on. So let's get right into episode three of season five. Go down, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications. And as soon as the latest video pops up, you will be the first one to know about it. Without further ado, then. <laughs> Great framing. <laughs> How many families get to see the same girl marry two different guys in families? Bless him. Oh, she can't even smile crack her face like ice. I think we're going to be very happy, you and I. I do too. Living in a tower so high, it touches the clouds. Of course, my grandmother couldn't wait to go home. The capital's not for everyone, I suppose. Come back, Lady Olenna. Does your mother like it here? I don't think so. She told me never to trust anyone in King's Landing. It's so wonderful to have her watching over you. A lioness guarding her cub. So send your mother But you'll away. always be her baby boy. Using her husband, her eldest child, and her father. It's no wonder she's so protective of you. She'll never let you out of her sight. Do you ever miss Castle Rock? There's nothing for me in Castle Rock. But that's where you grew up. Why are we speaking of Castle Rock? The way that you talked about it. I always thought that you missed it, that it was your real home. This is my real home now, where my family lives. But wouldn't you be happier in Castle Rock? <laughs> Mother! <laughs> Welcome. Uh, I love the way she said Don't that. Don't you look lovely? Can we bring you anything to eat or drink? I wish we had some wine for you. It's a bit early in the day for us. I'm glad to hear you happy. Ecstatic. I really am. Exhausted, to be honest, but... I'll leave you to it then. Oh, forgive me. I haven't been at court for long. I get so confused. What's the proper way to address you now? Queen Mother or Dowager Queen? There's no need for such formalities. You're good at the game, Marjorie, but... <laughs> you're not a Lannister. We can't hold the North with terror alone. You can't hold the North if we let these lesser lords insult us. I have something important to tell you. You're crazy. Stop eating and listen. We don't have enough men to hold the North if the other houses rise up against us. Our pact with the Lannisters protects I had a pact with Tywin Lannister, and Tywin Lannister is dead. The best way to forge a lasting alliance isn't by peeling a man's skin off. The best way is marriage. Now that you're a Bolton by royal decree, it's high time you married a suitable bride. That's a terrible idea. And as it happens, I found the perfect girl to solidify our hold on the North. No way! No! No! Roose Bolton murdered my brother. He betrayed my family. You're not marrying Roose Bolton. No, you'll be marrying his son and heir, Ramsay. And that's One day he'd worse! Be up the north and you'll... No. You've been running all your life. Terrible things happen to your family and you weep. You've been a bystander to tragedy from the day they executed your father. Stop being a bystander, do you hear me? There's no justice in the world, not unless we make it. You loved your family. Avenge them. I can't imagine the fresh horrors that await Sansa Stark, who hasn't had one good positive arc over the course of this entire show, and now this show's gonna marry her off to Ramsay Bolton? Have you considered my offer? I have. And I thank you for it. You do me great honor. But I have to refuse you. My place is here. I'm giving you the chance to avenge your family. 
But if your mind's made up, I won't try and dissuade you. May I ask your grace how long you plan to stay at Castle Black? Are you bored of us already? The Night's Watch can't continue to feed your men and the wildling prisoners indefinitely. We march on Winterfell within the fortnight before the snows trap us here. You have many enemies in Castle Black. Have you considered sending Alice a thorn elsewhere? I heard it was best to keep your enemies close. Whoever said that didn't have many enemies. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, he looks at Davos. What does that mean? Who are you? No one. Ow! A lie. A sad little lie. Who are you? I told you I'm not... What are you doing? We were only playing. The game of faces. The girl is not ready. Clearly not. I am ready. For what? To be no one. Arya Stark's sword, Arya Stark's clothes, Arya Stark's stolen silver. A man wonders, how is it that no one came to be surrounded by Arya Stark's things? I'm deeply confused. What are you going to do? I'm way too um, caught up with my possessions. Don't get rid of the needle. That might be too much. That's a beautiful shot. <sighs> Symbolically, you have to shed everything. So go ahead, throw it. Yeah, you ain't never gonna see John again, so that's not how this show operates. Stark family members never reunite. What is going on in this place? What do we do with them after we wash them? Lady Sansa, welcome. Oh, this gives me a sense of dread and anxiety and Michael. agita. Turn and run, girl. May I introduce my son, Ramsay Bolton. What? It's an honor to meet you, my lady. Who are those checks? Welcome home, Lady Stark. The North remembers. And blames Roose Bolton for killing Rob Stark? Well, Janice. I'm giving you Commander Greyguard. Greyguard is a ruin. Restore it as best you can. First build a Yarwick can spare ten I of I was charged with the defense of King's Landing when you were soiling your swaddling clothes. Keep your ruin. You mistake me, my lord. That was a command, not an offer. I will not have it! Did you hear me, boy? I will not have it! Are you refusing to obey my order? You can stick your order up your bastard ass. <laughs> <laughs> Take Lord Janice outside. Ooh. Ollie, bring me my sword. I was wrong. You're the Lord Commander. We all serve you. I'm sorry. Not only for this, for all I've done and said. My Lord, please, mercy. Mercy. I'll go, I will. I'm afraid. I've always been afraid. Good showing. Oh, Lord Jon Snow's finally come into his own. Oh, that's a brutal one. You have profaned our faith. I am the High Septon of the... You are a sinner. Ah! And you shall be punished. Ah! Sinner! 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 Oh. Your Grace, Grand Maester, Lord Tyrell, as the High Septon of the Faith of the Seven, an insult to me is an insult to the gods. You were assaulted. I was, by those fanatics who call themselves sparrows. I ask that you execute their leader, this so-called High Sparrow. If he goes unpunished... And where do I find this man? This High Sparrow? This does not seem like a place where Cersei would go. <laughs> High Sparrow. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Like Lord Duckling or King Turtle. The High Septon's behavior was corrosive, as was his attitude. Having a man like that reside in the Sept eats away at the Faith from the inside. So now he resides in the Red Keep dungeons instead. Hmm. The Faith and the Crown are the two pillars that hold up this world. One collapses, so does the other. We must do everything necessary to protect one another. Mountain. Frankenstein monster. There's some weird shit going on in this season. 
I have to get out of this wheelhouse. Atlantis is a large city. The likelihood of you being spotted here increases a hundredfold. Mm. I will not be of any use to Daenerys Targaryen if I lose my mind. I can't remember the last face I saw that wasn't yours. It's a perfectly good face. I'm losing my mind. Wow, what a location. The locations have gotten so incredible in this show as it's gone on. The only red priest we had in King's Landing was Thoros of Myr. This one's much better looking. We're going to meet the savior. You should have told me. Who doesn't want to meet the savior? Let's find a brothel. The mother of dragons. <laughs> it appears you're not the only Targaryen supporter. Oh, no. <laughs> Someone who inspires priests and whores is worth taking seriously. No need to worry. I was just... Oh. Thought you were someone else. Made some kind of mistake. Why don't you tell me what you think you're doing and then... <laughs> I'm taking you to the Queen. Nice. <sighs> Should have stayed in the box. All right, season five, episode three, titled High Sparrow. So why don't we start with them? Uh, we've talked about the gods, and we've had several groups that have worshipped different gods, uh, Lord of the Light. But the rise of the sparrows seems to be pretty significant. Um, they pull out the High Septon, um, High Priest, who of course is in a brothel because uh, they're hypocrites, and um, they abuse him. Cersei goes to visit the High Sparrow. I don't quite know 100% yet what her interest in all this is. It doesn't seem like something that she would bother herself with. Um, but she meets the High Sparrow, uh, played by Jonathan Price, who is a tremendous character actor. So, of course, he's going to be important. She essentially says, look, the Faith and the Crown are the two most important things, the two pillars that hold us up as a society. We have to figure out a way to work together. But I... He does not look like somebody who wants to be playing the game with the Lannisters. And I think she might misjudge where this is going. So um, I'll be curious to see where that goes. You don't bring Jonathan Price in for no reason whatsoever. So um, a lot of other things going on in this episode. The biggest one being Arya uh, in the House of Black and White. And her trying to learn how to become um, nobody, essentially. Lose her identity. And uh, she meets another girl who's there in training. What are they doing, though? They're washing corpses? The people are drinking from the water and then dying? That's a real... I'm baffled by this subplot so far. Um, as much as I am by the sparrows. I don't really understand 100% what's going on. Uh, Jon Snow gets challenged, and Jon sends a message. Sends a message to the Night's Watch. Um, I'm in charge now, and this is how it's going to go down. And Jon, I've given him hell before for not being able to behead people when he has needed to behead people... He does it. The other one is Sansa. Let's catch up with Sansa because I'm, I'm really afraid where her storyline is going. She's been promised by Baelish to uh, the Boltons. She's rightfully horrified by that because the Boltons have betrayed her family and led to the death of her mother and her brother. Um, and she's not even ha going to have to marry uh, Roose Bolton. She's got to marry Ramsay. Her suitors on this show have been... Joffrey and Ramsay. I mean, that's... <sighs> well, two of the worst that you could ever imagine. So we'll see what happens with Ramsay and Sansa. And Ramsay promises that she won't get hurt, but it's not how he operates. And it's intriguing that, that Reek recognizes her. And it'll be curious to see if she eventually recognizes him. She might even know, although I don't quite know how word traveled down to the King's Landing when she was there, if Theon was responsible for betraying Rob. That's information that could still be just in the north. Marjorie uh, further planting her seed, not only in uh, King Tommen, but also uh, playing a battle of wills with, with uh, Cersei. And, you know, if, if I'm Marjorie and I'm playing against Cersei, I would expect to lose. But Cersei, again, with the with the sparrows, is that that's an unusual subplot. And again, I'm going to say, out of character for her, and I don't necessarily know where that's going. We're three episodes into the season. Feels like multiple people are moving against the Boltons, whether it be Littlefinger uh, working with Sansa to sort of dethrone them from the inside. Because he does basically say to her, like, this is a chance to avenge your family. 
uh, Stannis wants to march on Bolton, and he wants uh, John to essentially help lead his charge because he feels that a Stark uh, should be in charge of Winterfell, should be uh, in charge of the North. So the target for this one seems to be uh, the Boltons, and we'll see how that plays out. And then um, Tyrion on the loose at the very end, abducted by Jorah, who has been... Now, when he says, I'm going to bring you to the Queen... I didn't even think about this. He says, I'm going to bring you to the queen, and we automatically assume it's Cersei because there's a bounty on his head. But um, Jorah probably doesn't know about the bounty on his head. Jorah probably is going to bring him uh, directly to his queen, which would be Danny. Interesting. See how that plays out. We will be right back here for Season 5, Episode 4. So be sure to go down, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, and as soon as I post the next video, you will be alerted to it here at Cinema Blend.